I'm Moffat here for the uh, MEP candidate for the um, South West um, um, with Black Taxi, both here to highlight the climate and ecological emergency that we're facing. Rising tides, rising water. Yeah, the, the South West is particularly vulnerable, but the whole of the UK is. We're already seeing 400,000 people die every year because of climate change and the impacts to come are far, far worse. That's why we're standing as climate and ecological emergency independence in the European elections. This is an emergency. The UK government and the Irish government have now declared that, but declaring it isn't enough. The action has to start now. We have to bring emissions down this year. The South West will be flooded. Plymouth, where we are today, will be flooded with climate change unless we act really soon and really urgently. We have to bring emissions down this year. The research suggests we need a 10% reduction in emissions in the UK this year if we're going to get serious about this crisis. The UK is, is due to, it's going to cost us £23 billion a year according to the government's conservative figures about the costs of, of just from flooding alone. So we're here today getting flooded out in our press conference to highlight the risk of flooding from climate change but also the other risks. Look, last year we had a drought in the summer. We lost 30 to 50% of our crops. Two more summers like that and experts say there'll be no food on the shelves. There'll be a shortage of food in Europe and in the UK. This is very serious, this is urgent. Our, the, our next, uh, the future generation is at stake. My children, I want them to have a future. They won't have a future unless we act soon and act on this emergency. One of the reasons I'm standing is I was, um, took part in the Extinction Rebellion protest and I held a people's assembly there and it was asking why aren't there more minority voices speaking um, um, at, at Extinction Rebellion and the answer came back that to, to rebel you need to feel like you belong and that really hit home for me because I come my parents and ancestors are from Bangladesh they're facing uh, one, of the, the, one of the most vulnerable countries to flooding and migration is happening but even being here now there are many people that still don't feel that they belong enough to rebel, to be able to say that this is happening and we want, we need to act in civil disobedience together. So that's why one of the reasons I'm standing here, because in the global south, they're going to be facing these rising waters. They're going to be migrations. There's going to be more of these, um, this happening around the world. And we have to take that into account. Um, a lot of the renewables as well that we need, a lot of the metals that we need come from the global south. So could, there could be a whole another sort of neo-colonialism and we have to bring that into account into Europe as well among all the other issues as well so we need global and ecological justice as well and that's why our policy is to, to have a citizens assemblies throughout Europe and, and including the UK on the, on the crisis on the emergency what, what, what are the best policies what are the solutions the solutions all exist and if we could do this in a range of ways we could do this in a way where it's a dictatorship being told how to do it and it benefits just a few people but we can do it where everyone benefits we've all got sacrifices to make in this we are going to have a materially less uh, excessive future we aren't going to be able to consume in the way we are doing at the moment but we're going to have a richer quality of life if we pull together and do it with a common purpose and the best way to release that potential is through citizens assemblies ordinary people like us coming together and with all of the experts on tap not on top and having the choosing the best policies that actually allow us to meet these demands, meet these challenges, but in a way that benefits everyone. Renewable energy creates six times more jobs than fossil fuel energy, for example. Energy efficiency is so much cheaper, and it's a really quick way of making sure everyone in the UK has a warm, comfortable, healthy home. These are obvious things that I'm sure the Citizens' Assembly will do, but it's not down to us or any other politician to decide what they are. It's about creating a process for system change ordinary people like us can make those choices and bring them forward. So what we're saying to you is, don't vote for us, rebel. But if you do vote, ask whoever you're going to vote for what their position is on the climate emergency. Will they declare um, a climate emergency and commit to going zero carbon as soon as possible, bringing emissions down this year? And will they appoint a citizens' assembly of ordinary people like us to bring about the detailed policies? The solutions exist. We just need people to help choose what they are and how to bring them forward. So really pressure your candidates to bring about the commitment to the citizens' assembly because that's what's missing at the moment from this debate, one of the many things.
we've had the climate and environment um, declaration passed by uh, by Parliament, a motion passed by Parliament uh, about two, a week ago. But it's still not enough in that motion because it's still saying we need to get there following the recommendations of the Climate Change Committee, which has recommended net zero by 2050. And even in that report, it says net zero by 2050 will give a 50-50 chance of, uh, of, of not reaching the 1.5 degrees warned of in the IPCC report last year. That's only 50-50. I mean, would you put your child on a bus if you knew that it could crash with a 50-50 chance? So we need to act much faster and much quicker than that. And it's not, and it's the climate and it's the uh, uh, the, the environment and the ecology as well. We're here in the southwest, look, sitting in boredom. Corals are dying. The the IPBES report from the UN just last week around the uh, ecology said that 70% of wetlands have disappeared since 1970. So this is species extinction on a mass scale happening. And we have to feel into that as well, what we're doing to the very life cycles that support our, our lives and the futures of, of our children's lives too. Yeah, what my you said there is really important, the feel into it. Allow the truth in, like tell the truth and act on it as if it's real. I studied climate change at university, I lectured in climate change and I've taught it and been in academia for 25 years. But it's only really in the last eight months since the emergency has become so strong and I've really heard that phrase, tell the truth and act on it as if it's real, that I've really stopped it being an intellectual exercise and really allow myself to feel it. And that's really painful to actually feel that we've known for 30 years about this crisis and we've chosen to ignore it. Scientists and government and companies, and all of us are partly responsible, particularly now politicians. We're saying to the politicians, you've known about this for 25 years and in that period, in the last 25 years, we've omitted more than the whole of human history combined. And that is completely immoral. We've known about this crisis and we've made it worse. Now it's time to act. It has to stop now. As the, as the youth are standing up with the climate strikes, Extinction Rebellion and other movements are coming up around the world, so we join with them and say, let's use this political exercise of the, of the European elections, not just to be another political exercise with business as usual. Business as usual is no longer an option. That's why we're standing, to make that point, to say we have to bring about change now. We have to bring about the urgent change that's actually able to deal with that. And we do that by letting the truth in and acting on it as if it's real. It's okay to feel that pain. It's okay to feel the anger and the grief and the fear that that brings up. Whatever emotions it brings up for you, allow them. Because through that, allowing them with those emotions, you'll actually start to act on it as if it's real. It's only by that that we really get the changes needed. We, the emotions have been missing from this debate for 30 years. And that's partly why we're at the crisis now. We're about to head over the cliff. It's time to panic, it's time to act. It's time to act with a level of urgency that's actually real. Politician, as, as Larch was saying, I agree with everything he said. The politicians have known about this for such a long time and it's always just been put back to the to the back burner. And it's only through direct action and civil disobedience that began to bring it to the forefront and the media began also changing its message. And that's what's that's why we're standing here, because we need to keep continuing the pressure at all levels, not just in the UK, but in Europe. Europe is the, the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions after China and the US. So this message of net zero has to be taken to the European Parliament, to the European Commission, and, and it has to have that declaration and then act on it too. And it's not just acting on it on the politicians, it's got to be come to the people as well so that we can feel it and know what's happening. And that's why, as I was saying, we need to have citizens' assemblies as well so on, on a national scale to bring politics closer to the people so that we begin to see and act upon as nations and countries together. Because we can only do this together. It has to go wider than the green message. It has to go wider. It has to go to all the marginalised voices, to everybody in in our country and in Europe and globally as well. We've got to begin to act together rather than following the divide and conquer kind of politics that's been going on, that's toxified our whole understanding of politics. In my nation, my country, and my, I come from Bangladesh, and that was split um, along lines of, of, of Muslim. The conditions were set by the elite in, in, in England uh, 50 years ago. And we're still feeling the repercussions of that now between Muslims and Hindus. Before that, people worked on their land and didn't have those divides. And we're seeing that same way of thinking being applied in this country too. 
And so we have to come together across our divides, well, whatever colour we are, whatever marginalised voice we are, we need to come together for the face this extinction crisis together and to feel our grief and to feel our hearts open under and following from that grief. Absolutely. People ask us, why are we standing? Aren't we going to split the green vote or the Remain vote? But we're standing for everyone, whatever party, whether you're with For the EU, there is no EU on a dead planet. This po this issue, the climate and ecological emergency, trumps all the others. This needs to be the priority for every every governing body, for every politician, for everyone standing as a candidate. So we ask everyone to make that point, to put the pressure on, so that they they, they see it as the priority it is. For us all to let the truth in and act on it as if it's real and do it to become our own priority in our own lives. And through that, to push the politicians to also make it their priority. We are now in the sixth mass extinction. Scientists have proven that. Um, there have been five mass extinction events in, 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 in geological history. We're now in the sixth one because of human activity. And as, as the report that Mothia mentioned earlier came out last week says, that alone threatens our survival as a species. The species loss that we're causing with 200 species going extinct every day, that alone threatens our survival as a species. And that alone has to change. But also we've got the climate emergency as well. And the solutions to one are also the solutions to the other. So as we appoint a citizens' assemblies to come up with those solutions, they are there and they're real and they will benefit everyone. So we're, we're now getting very cold in this... Uh, Waters are rising. We are getting, uh, I think this, flood, this press conference is officially flooded out. Um, <laughs> so please don't let your homes get flooded out. Please don't let our future get flooded out. Please take action. Please join with us. With the Climate and Ecological Emergency Independence, Facebook, we've got a website, please share that information, please put pressure on all the candidates in this election to see what they're doing. In London we've got an, not seven candidates standing in London and one of them, Daisy Gargi, is um, standing as our, as our prime candidate. We're encouraging people to vote for her. She's 19. She'll be the youngest ever uh, MEP when she gets voted in. So if, if you know anyone in London, please encourage them to vote for her in London and please encourage everyone to get involved in this, in this, in this movement and this a, a, a climate and ecological emergency.